Hi, I'm Elise. This is Which Way, and today I'll be taking you through the witch lore of bed knobs and broomsticks. Released in 1971, this family adventure musical stars Angela Lansbury as Eglantine Price, David Tomlinson as Amelius Brown, Cindy O'Callaghan as Carrie, Ian Wayhill as Charlie, and Roy Snart as Paul. Three children have been displaced from London during World War II and are sent to live with Miss Eglantine Price, who, as they soon find out, is an apprentice witch taking a witchcraft course via correspondence. To ensure the children keep her secret, she enchants a bed knob which, when turned, can take those on board anywhere they wish to go. In this case, it is to visit Professor Amelius Brown, who has cancelled Miss Price's course before she could complete her training. Not believing in magic, he sold spells from half a battered book as his witchcraft course. Though now he knows magic is very real, he is more than keen to help the group track down Miss Price's final spell, just in time to fight off a Nazi invasion. They can find the words to this spell on Astaroth's Star. In the film, Astaroth was a sorcerer, but this name is better known in demonology as one of the great Dukes of Hell and part of the evil trinity along with Beelzebub and Lucifer. Yes, Satan himself, whose name, believe it or not, actually appears in the film. In Miss Price's workshop, we briefly see a poster on the wall bearing the name Satan. This is actually a piece from the philosophical epitaph of W.C. Esquire, which depicts the realms and elements. Also in her workshop, she has Newt's Eyes, a potion ingredient made famous by Shakespeare's Weird Sisters, and a chart depicting the astrological signs of the zodiac. In the opening credits, we see what could be an early astronomer, as well as someone practicing a form of divination known as palmistry. We also see a wizard whose blue robe is adorned with alchemical sigils and an owl is perched on his shoulder. I believe this may be a nod to an earlier Disney character, Merlin from the Sword in the Stone with his trusty owl Archimedes. A couple of other images from the opening sequence also caught my eye as they seem to be inspired by this engraving. In both images, we see a witch at a cauldron out of whose smoke rides all kinds of creatures leaving the Sabbath on the wind, and people dancing with hoofed creatures in a ring around a tree. This comes from the 1612 book On the Inconstancy of Witches, a work by Pierre de Lanca describing his witch hunt in the Basque region. This work also inspired the film Akalare, a beautiful film which you can find out more about in my witch lore review. But back to the opening credits, we also see a witch on a broom leading an army <laughs> against the Nazis. Now this is actually something that happened during World War II, though not in such a fantastical sense, depending on your point of view. In 1940, the ceremonial magician Dion Fortune assembled a group of like-minded occultists to fend off the invading army in the spiritual realm. She writes about it in her Magical Battle of Britain, which I have yet to check out, but where I first heard of this was on the Occult Confessions podcast. I will be sure to link the episode below so you can check it out yourself as it will take you through more of Dion Fortune's occult connections. Ironically, our war witch Angela Lansbury would also go on to voice the witch Mummy Fortuna in The Last Unicorn, another beautiful film. This film, however, was actually based off of the stories The Magic Bed Knob and Bonfires and Broomsticks by Mary Norton. The Nazis don't make an appearance in these, however, the witchcraft course was apparently legit, with a confidentiality clause that, if broken, would result in cosmic creepus. They make a nod to this in the film, with it being the name of Miss Price's cat. What do you call your cat? 
I don't believe in giving animals ridiculous names. I call him Cosmic Creepers because that's the name he came with. In the book, the bed could also travel in time, and they do so to save Emilius Jones, the fake necromancer, from being burned at the stake after the Fire of London. This obviously inspired the character of Emilius Brown, who, though a con man, used some actual occult symbols to make himself seem legit. On his cart, we see symbols that were inspired by pentacles from the Key of Solomon and the planetary figure of Mars, which makes an appearance in the three books of occult philosophy. The set designers definitely did their research here, and bedknobs and broomsticks scores for lore. In this world, if you have an affinity for it, apparently an incantation is enough to produce a magical effect. One incantation in particular stands out. There are some fun online theories as to what this phrase could mean, but it seems that it is to bedknobs and broomsticks what supercalifragilisticexpialidocious was to Mary Poppins, who by the way is definitely a witch. Please let me know what you thought of this film in the comments below, as well as any other witchy recommendations for my witch lore reviews. If you'd like some additional content, you can follow me on my linked social media accounts, but if you like what I do here, please remember to share this video to someone who would enjoy it, like it, and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you very much for watching here on Witch Way.